welcome to our week four Tuesday at 5 p.m. meeting. Um, this is week four, February 20th, and I'm going to share screen now. Joining me today has always been or is uh, home and um, he's been diligent with attending Zoom. So I, you sent me um, a message with your uh, personal essay, uh, requested me to look at it. So here I am. Again, the, the people with uh, their name grayed out like this are the ones who have not put in their submission. So I have, right now I'm showing 18 people who submitted, but the rest uh, need to do that for this assignment. Okay, so let me go to Phone and give him some feedback or request it. Okay, so it's a, it's a great uh, title that you have here. So I think you should um, use this title for your personal essay. But perhaps um, you could add to the end right here, you know, uh, a dash, an end dash, saying that this is your view, my view, or my experience, or um, according to me. So it would be like this. It can be a right. M dash, which is the long dash, they so say my personal opinion or my experience or my point of view, something like that. To indicate that this is your personal essay. Uh, your pre write is pretty solid. It is, you did focus pre writing, and your outline is terrific. Your thesis statement can use. Um, a little, a little bit more explanation. Um, well, it needs to be more concrete, and I think you should add uh, the because after. So it should, it should read like this: Healthcare should be a right based on um, the following reason, and then you list the reasons out. Then uh, each of those reasons will become your body paragraph. So that's how you would um, frame your thesis statement here. Does that make sense? Who are you following? Okay. So uh, it's great that you are explaining um, why healthcare should be a right, but when you state it, when you write it, you should include the because, the reason why it should be a right based on your point of view, okay? Based on what you've experienced. And it looks like you have a lot to say in your body paragraph, and uh, right down to your grandmother's death, and you're visited in the hospital, and pregnancy from your, with, your, uh, with your wife and your sister. So these are really excellent examples that will enable you to um, narrate. So the conclusion um, right here, I see that your outline doesn't really include the elements of the conclusion. So let me tell you what the elements of the conclusion are. First of all, you need to refer back to your thesis, uh, to your um, topic, which is healthcare, right? Healthcare as a right, then you need to restate your thesis statement. Okay, so just write your thesis uh, sentence a different way. Um, then summarize the supporting points in your body section, body paragraph. Then say a an insight. So what? Or ask another rhetorical question uh, to get the reader to think more on this controversial topic. Okay. So those are the choices for the clincher. We call this the clincher. 
this is called the literature of an academic essay. Okay? So those are the elements that should go into the conclusion. But because you don't have it listed here, I thought that I would give you this feedback so that you can incorporate um, these elements into your conclusion. But looking at your body paragraph, I, I do see that uh, you're on the right track and it's just um, balancing, balance your um, critical commentaries with narrative detail. Okay, so so you you can also add that, and it seems like you are already uh, doing some of that by you know mentioning some of the things that are going with your wife, for example, here. But what I meant when I said narrative elements uh, include, and you don't have to include all of them all at once, but at least include dialogue, uh, setting, characterization. That is that describe description of uh, the people involved. Okay, a little bit of that doesn't help, doesn't hurt. Um, like what sets them apart? Okay? Like looking at your grandma, what do you remember most about her? So if you include those descriptions about your grandma, that that means that you hit the narrative element. And if you include those details, uh, you then can improve the quality of your essay. Okay, so a uh, uh, conflict um, action. Okay, so conflict means action. So what's going on? And, and you have it here already. Uh, maybe resolution. If you have reached a, sort of like a, a a solution to a problem, you presented in a body paragraph. So while it says body paragraph here, you can actually use multiple paragraphs to support one main point. Okay, if your paragraph gets too long because of your narration details, then you, should, you probably should break it, break it up into multiple paragraphs. Okay? Are you, uh, does, that, does that work? So narrative elements um, are part of your um, personal essay according to the inquiry-based approach that we're following. So the balancing of the mountain and the sea. But at first look, at first glance, you are you are on the right track, okay? What questions do you have? Do you have any other questions for me? Okay. Terrific. Uh, so let me go to week four then, um, before I start talking about week four, do you, uh, do you have any comments or questions about previous weeks? Okay. Great. Okay. So now this week is uh, a difficult week because we're working on multiple assignments at once. So let's look at the, re the required reading first. As usual, we follow the order listed here under modules for week four. So we look here. These three articles here, Alexis, Eight Ten, and Manchester, um, are exemplars of the personal essay. So these are published personal essays written by professional writers. So, so they should give you more um, guidance looking at them on how to uh, how how they've done their essay. Okay, the kind of topics that they're addressing. And the kind of things that, that they did with narrative details, especially home at last. This essay is filled with wonderful narrative essays. In this paragraph right here, it's upside down, I know. <laughs> but he, did, he narrates with clarity the kind of details right down to um, coffee shop along Addis Main Boulevard. Okay, so, so those are the the narrative details that, that are gonna improve the quality of your essay that makes it interesting to read. Okay. So uh, we also have a few things to watch 
and watch as much as you can. But um, especially if you enjoy watching a movie, this is the movie. The Great Debaters is the movie. Our main goal for for these um, videos and movie is to help us understand the art of persuasion or rhetoric. Okay. Rhetoric simply means argumentation, how to argue well, how to debate and argue, okay? So these are uh, options to watch. Going on to um, the 40-point discussions forum, this task right here is worth 20 points. Okay. So once you are done with your draft, of the personal essay, you post it up here. You post using a, a Google Drive link. So hit reply and then post and say, uh, this is my rough draft uh, personal essay. And then include the link. I have a question here. Okay, sure, that's, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go to my drive. And I'm going to open up a person essay. Can we do this an existing person essay? See what I could come up with. Okay, I'm going to use uh, the student exemplar here. Okay, so once I'm here, uh, and this is say that this is my trap, right? I click on share, click on share, and uh, and this is the link right here. Okay, you can just leave it at can view or can comment. Okay, can comment means that whoever is commenting on your your document can actually on the side can add their feedback, add their um, uh, question, add their notes to the side. Uh, so I would, if I were you, I would select can comment and then copy this link. Click done. Now uh, go back to the discussion. Okay, and then paste it, paste that in, okay? So that's your link right there. Um, and a note of caution, you should not uh, select can edit. I don't think you should because, you know, whoever has the link can go in here and mess up your draft. So you don't want that. So just either can comment or can view. Okay. Um, so that, click here and then again copy the link and then go to click done and then go to the discussion and uh, paste it. So that's part one. Yeah, you need to log on to your own drive, okay? So this is why I, rec I highly recommend using Google Drive because of this share function here for online peer review tasks. And as you can see, this class demands and requires that you are able to participate in these tasks called peer revision editing. And for each of our major essays, we're gonna do this. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Drive, it's gonna be difficult. Now, that say you can still do it because when you hit, when you hit reply, okay, you have the option to attach you can attach your Word document. Okay, like, like if, you, if you decide to use Microsoft Word, like this, you can attach it, okay? So let me see if I can post a reply. See, now I've attached my, my uh, Microsoft Word document here. I'm gonna remove it because um, that was just for demonstration. So, you should be able to attach a file. If you don't want to use Google Drive, which is 
still highly recommended. You can use Microsoft Word, but you should not use uh, pages, you know, um, pages that come with uh, a MacBook. Okay, so because um, Canvas is not compatible with pages yet, like this. Okay, so don't use pages, again, for the reason that um, Canvas is not very compatible with pages. And on my end, Canvas will still allow you to upload uh, pages document, but on my end, I would have to access your documents using a MacBook Air, and I don't always have, um, well, I have a MacBook Air, but I, I don't always access it via a MacBook. I sometimes use a school computer to access it, and at Evergreen, we use, um, com uh, what is it? PC. So, so Google Drive is your uh, recommended way. Okay. So the deadline for submitting your draft is highlighted here. It's Friday, this Friday, before 11, 15, p.m. You should post early so that once I see that you posted, I can pair you with the person who posts immediately after you. So that once I pair you, then you can complete the, the next part of this task which is this handout, okay? So this handout, you do the same thing. Now, if you want to type directly in here, first, you have to log on to your drive, okay? So log, log in to your drive. Um, then you click file, you click make a copy. Then you, you know, you name, you rename this however you want, so, uh, feedback or um, boom. If I name it and then I I put it in the whatever folder I want, right? Uh, in the in the right folder just to organize it. And then click OK. Okay, click OK. So then you've created your own copy. Once you've created your own copy, you can um hold on, let me double check. Yeah, can you? Uh, once, because if you don't make a copy, if you don't make your own copy, you cannot type in. On your end, you cannot type in anything. Okay? So, you just need to make a copy on uh, Google Drive so that you can type like this. And out of the paper is phone. And the paper is. Uh, sure. I'm gonna have to redo everything. I'm gonna have to erase everything because this is uh, the, the, te uh, the template, the handout that I'm giving you guys. So then go through the handout and then answer the question looking at your peer, uh, your peer's essays. I'm gonna pair someone with you. I'm gonna say, once I see that you post, I click reply under your name, your post, and I say, uh, phone and then the pair up. Okay, so that's when you know that you have been paired with Finn. Okay, so after I pair you, then you click on that handout and then you make a copy and then you complete the handout. This is only one page. You complete it and you, you know, you fill out your responses to each of these questions. And then after you're done with this handout, you click share. Okay, you click share again, and you copy the link. Again, you copy the link, and then you go here. You click reply underneath your peer. You click reply to your peer, right? You click reply, and you say, um, here's my completed handout. I'm showing my feedback to your first for a rough draft, okay? And then you include the link like that. And you hit reply, okay? And that's how, that's how, you, that's how you do this first task. That's how you do it. Any questions so far? Okay, good. Good, good.
and do on a day. So that's the first half of uh, week four discussion forum. And completing this task will earn you 20 points. 20 points. And this assignment is worth 40 points. So if you, and this is a time sensitive task. That means you have to do it by a certain time, otherwise you will lose on, uh, you will lose 20 points. So the peer editing handout is due by Saturday. As you can see, you don't really have that much time. So it will be really up to you. If you post early, I can pair you early, then you can get it done early. So you don't have to uh, wait till the last minute to do this test. This, again, time sensitive. You need to uh, get that done in a sensitive um, manner. So moving on to the next task, which is this one. I've given you slide share, slide share to this chapter. I assume that you have already looked at, at these slide shares and looked at the chapters. But if you have not, then here's another chance for you to look and really look at what our textbook is saying. Again, our textbook is called The Curious Writer, written by Bruce Ballinger. We're following his inquiry-based approach to write our essays and to study uh, and follow a controversial topic for this task. And if you don't read his book and you don't do this, you don't view these slides, you're going to be lost because most all of our, as I would say, all of our papers, essays are based on um, this book. Okay, so then we have these slide shares available to you. They're uh, prepared really well and if you don't like reading textbooks, you can have yeah, you do have the option to look at these slide shares in the form of a presentation. But if you look at these slide shares and you don't really understand what's going on, then you really need to look at the book. Okay, so the book again is found under announcements. Just to remind you again that it's under announcement and uh, it's linked to our textbook right here. Okay. So once you are when you click here, then this is the book. You click on there, and you should be able to view the book. And this book is uh, free to you. You don't have to buy it. You have the PDF here. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back to uh, week four discussion. At any given point, you can ask me a question uh, by typing in the chat field. Okay. Click the chat here and you can type in your question or you can say it so that I can, can hear you. <clears throat> okay, so next. Oh, uh, this test is only asking you to post a reflective paragraph on how useful the slide share are to you. Okay. Just reflect back and then post that paragraph. And this test is really an introduction to our next two papers. Okay. Our next two papers are the letter to the editor and the interview paper. After we're done with the personal essay, uh, we're gonna begin working on the letter to the editor first and then the interview paper. Okay. Uh, the letter to the editor instructions are right here. So click to access, click to access the database right here. And um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to mute Vanessa for a second, and then if Vanessa has a question, uh, please unmute yourself. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, so once you click on this, you, you're taken here to the library data, databases. So click on Find Articles in Media, and I'll go over this again next week. This is just a heads up. Then you click on um, new sources plus. New source plus. Or Nexus Unique. 
So these are the databases for newspaper and magazine. So once you're here, well, it asks you to log in. If you're off campus, it's going to ask you to log in. I'm going to log in first. I don't know my number. So let me find my number. Hold on. Uh, and now I'm logged on to the database. Okay, so here in the search field, type editorial plus uh, whatever controversial topic that you're following. So in case of um, in case of uh, phones, so the healthcare is right. Let's see what else. I mean. See what what you what you are showing. So these are news. Okay, you want editorial. You don't want news. Here's the editorial right here. Uh, on healthcare, it says editorial. But you can refine your searches over to the left. So you can find them. Uh, you can narrow the year publication down to the last four or five years. Then you can limit it to full text. Okay. Then you can uh, type in the sources, publication, subject, publisher language. But ultimately, you need to select, find, and select an article, uh, an editorial, which is not a regular news article. An editorial is different. So this is the editorial right here. It says editorial, and it appears on the ed editorial section of the newspaper. So here's uh, a good one for a phone. Should he choose to use this, he can certainly use this. Okay. If you click site and go down to MLA, this is the uh, the website information for for him. But we're not going to be using this information yet. But this side button does that in the databases, so he can listen to it, he can read it, and understand it. Um, but you should choose a, an editorial instead. So. That's what is uh, going on with the letter to, to the editor, which is our second paper after the first essay. Okay. Um, more on this next week. Right now, I would just like for you to think about it and to practice accessing EVC library databases and find a suitable editorial to you. Um, then this. This little preparation note is for you to come up, brainstorm some ideas um, on who you want to interview. Okay? An expert in that controversial topic, on that controversial topic, that could teach you a thing or two more about that, that controversial topic. So, uh, if you're following healthcare as a choice or healthcare as a right, as a right, then perhaps you should talk to a um, an administrator in the healthcare or in the hospital, like um, I don't know the one of the admins who work there or who who might have uh, some insights into this issue. Or you can even shoot for it to be in um, the president of that hospital. <laughs> if you could uh, get, you know, an interview uh, appointment with him. So uh, start brainstorming for um, a possible interviewee, the person you might interview for, for this paper. So this is the last half of our week four discussion. So follow the instructions and um, and post your required responses like this one.
the last half asked you to post a short paragraph for answering those questions. There's really nothing uh, that I require you to post for this task, except that you should do it so that you can find your editorial. Okay. So this task is a three to five sentence reflective paragraph that you need to post. And then this task, again, I've already explained it earlier. So you need to post your personal essay work draft and then uh, wait until I, I pair you with someone else so you can trade um, your paper, your rough draft, and complete this handout. And post this handout on the discussion forum. Yeah, go ahead. Phone is typing, typing something out under chat field. Yes, post the draft, the rough draft, or the first draft evaluate, yes. Yes, final draft submitted. Submitted by Sunday, 11 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So let me talk to you about uh, where to submit your final draft. Yes. Yeah. Uh, reflect on these chapters. A paragraph reflecting on these slides here for the chapters that I assigned you to read through this week, and then start working on the letter to editor and the interview paper, thinking about a possible person to interview. No, not quite. That's not all for this week. So under week four module, as you can see, there are other items, right? So require reading first, go to discussion, then the checklist for the personal essay enables you to ensure that you have everything. Uh, speak for your peer feedback, and you can see the same document that I I had shown earlier. And then this is where you post, you submit your final draft. So it says final draft. So you click on there, and then you submit via credit in. So I've already said credit in where to work well. Uh, again, credit so in captures any plagiarism. So be careful with that, okay? You don't plagiarize. Um, try to use quotation marks uh, where you are quoting something. Um, don't recycle your paper. Um, do an original work. Otherwise, it will capture uh, plagiarism. So this is where you, you post, you submit your final draft. So going back to Week four, you have the rubric here as well, so that you know what I'm, what I will be looking for when I grade your personal essay final draft. Now, if you don't like your grade after I've graded it, um, you do have a week to revise and resubmit. Okay. So follow my instructions. Um, and then after, after you have submitted this, I will grade it. I will read, I will read some feedback. I feel like I, I've lost my ability to talk already. Um, so after you look at your grade and you don't like it, say you have like 20 out of 30 points. So that, that's less than a D, that's like a C. And you don't like that score, you have a week. And then follow my feedback, improve your draft, resubmit it and you will always get a higher score. So if you're doing everything I've asked you to do so far, um, and you look and you satisfy all the checklists, uh, you know, all the items on the checklist, then you probably will get a high score on this essay. Okay, so that's all for week four. Um, pretty much a heavy week because you have a paper due, and uh, the due date is firm, February 25th, but that means that I will also accept, I have to accept late submission, because I understand and I realize that this is an online class and people have uh, different availability and 
they, they just have to do whatever they can with their limited time. So I do accept late work, but I, I apply late penalty. And if people submit late work, um, they lose the ability to resubmit, you know, for a better grade. So. Um, actually, no, it's like we only, for example, we only have uh, two weeks on the letter to the editor. The editorial letter. We only have two weeks on it. The interview paper there, uh, it's about three weeks. And after the interview paper, you have two weeks on the profile essay. So it, it depends. It depends on the, the type of essay or paper that we're working on. It's not for every four weeks we have one. When, when we go towards the other um, paper and essay, um, you will have fewer days to work on it. Especially the last uh, two papers, the last two essays. You won't have that much time to work on, on, on those papers. So you really need to, um, to be all caught up in, you know, with, uh, with this class so that you're not far, too far behind. And if you're, you're behind trying to catch up so that you're not way, way behind later on. Um, do you have any questions or comments or anything that I should know about? I have not graded your submissions yet. So I'll try to get to them at least by Friday. Um, so these are my to-do items over here. Okay, I need to grade uh, these submissions. So the way that I grade uh, the free writing and outlining material is this. Um, if you did both free write and outline, you get full credit. Like phone, you would get full credit because you, I looked at yours earlier, and you follow instructions well, so you would have full credit. Okay. Uh, where, where are you at? There you go. So you need the free write, and then you have the outline. So that would be a 10 for me. If you only did one, say you only did the pre-write and you don't have the outline, then that would be a half point, half credit, right? uh, five points out of ten. That's how I grade it. And uh, I would also grade your discussion the same way. If you did all the past that I've asked you, then you will get full credit. So, Looks like you have done all the tasks, um, and you, you reply to, to other people. So yeah, you will get full credit. But let me look at the sign up sheet to see uh, if I can begin forming groups for the memoir project. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, taking further. But meanwhile, um, can I help you with anything else? Well, I don't know why taking further. Come on. No? Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm looking at <coughs> the sign-up sheet for your uh, semester-long memoir reading project. Now, by this time, you should already selected a memoir to read, and you should already begin, already have begun reading it. Uh, okay, so Alex would need to we need another person to team up with him. Yeah. Uh, and Sheila would need another person to team up with her. Okay, so Vivian and Fong would be a team. So these four, these three folks, four folks would be a team. These three folks would be a team, a group. Okay, so nobody can be by themselves. Uh, it is a collaborative project. Um, so then, 
I would need to remind people to to sign up, and I would need to by next week I would need to move people around and finalize the group. But preliminarily speaking, uh, this is what we have so far. And so I don't I notice that I don't see uh, Vanessa sign up yet. So maybe Vanessa, you can um, put your name somewhere here. Okay. So. Um, you can choose uh, the book by looking up uh, on Google okay, and look at the, at the cover and see if, you, if that's something you want to read. Read uh, background information about the, the work and see and decide for yourself. <clears throat> so this is um, an urgent that people need to sign up. Let me see. Uh, the last attendance or access. Yeah, yeah people are, are not submitting work uh, regularly and on time, uh, which worries me a little. But by week six, I would have to fill out a an early alert report under my web and. Um, that's when I begin to uh, drop people who have not submitted anything or encourage the people who have not submitted anything to do something before I either drop uh, those people or um, Evergreen Early Alert Committee will reach out to offer help. Okay. Um, that's all I got for you today. I'm going to unmute you and uh, take in questions right now. I kept forgetting to take attendance, so but let me do that. Again, attendance does not um, affect your grade. I just like to do it. Just give a record for my time. <laughs> Okay, so if no, if none of you uh, have questions or comments, I'm going to end the meeting. Um, it has been recorded, and I'll post it on my YouTube channel so other people can see it. Have a lovely week, and good luck with your assignment. I will be back online Thursday at five, and again on Friday at five. So as you work on your assignments and you have more questions and need me to show you how to do something by um, you know individually, one-on-one. Uh, Please join me online. Have a good week.